Why Relief Factor is so successful in lowering or eliminating pain? I'm often asked that question. Pete and Seth Talbot, the father and son founders of Relief Factor, tell me they believe our bodies were designed to heal. The doctors who formulated Relief Factor selected the four best ingredients, 100% drug-free ingredients that each help your body deal with inflammation. Order the three-week quick start now. Discount it to only nineteen ninety-five to see if it will work for you too. Call 800-500-8384. ReliefFactor.com. Want a snack that's both good tasting and good for you? Go with grapes from California every day. Enjoy the delicious heart-healthy benefits of California grapes. Available at Meyer. 707 Team Hockberg Traffic Center time in Jim. In Skokie, Tui is blocked this morning between Lawndale and St. Louis Avenue due to a crash. We see delays on the Adams Tollway westbound I-90 from 31 to past the Elgin Toll Plaza. It's a collision there blocking two right lanes. And traffic slow on westbound I-80, 80th Avenue to Wolf with a crash on the right shoulder. And we see milder delays farther west from 30 to Gallagher. Inbound Kennedy, delays begin at Cumberland. It's 26 minutes, so hair to downtown, quicker the express. Inbound Eisenhower at 17th Avenue, a crash blocks the left lane. It's 45 minutes, 390 to downtown. The Stevenson from 355 to Lakeshore Drive, it's 35 minutes. And the ride from 95th to downtown, it's 20 minutes. That's traffic. I'm Jim Calamonte on AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. In our AM560 Weather Center, meteorologist Steve Williams. Clouds to start. We'll see some sun today. Winds start to diminish. High 55. It'll be clear and breezy tonight. Could see some freezing spots. Low 36. A mix of sun and clouds and breezy and cool tomorrow. The high tomorrow, 56. I'm Steve Williams on AM560, The Answer. In fact, the National Weather Service has just issued a freeze warning for uh, low-lying spots from 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. 50 at O'Hare, still gusty winds up to 20 miles an hour. Next news at 7.30. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next on AM560, The Answer. Listen to AM560, The Answer, online at 560theanswer.com, on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, on TuneIn, iHeart, and Radio.com. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy. I know uh, most of the national attention is on... uh, related to big tech is on Twitter and Facebook trying to slow the spread of the Hunter Biden email story. But there is uh, a concurrent issue with big tech that is particularly important to us because it involves our friends Shelby and Eli Steele. We had uh, Shelby Steele on a couple weeks ago to uh, preview the film they just released. uh, He and his son called What Killed Michael Brown. And it was uh, supposed to be... uh, available to live stream on Amazon Prime. Nope. (gasps) Amazon cancels Shelby Steele. Uh, Why? What was their reasoning? Oh, well. They didn't have to give a reason, right? Because their reasoning is it doesn't meet Prime Video's content quality expectations. Amazon will not be accepting resubmission of this title, and this decision may not be appealed. Uh, Caesar has spoken. Uh, The Wall Street Journal opined on this. Jason Riley wrote about it as well. Uh, Wall Street Journal editorial board. What killed Michael Brown doesn't fit the dominant narrative of white police officers killing young black men because of systemic racism. As a result, said uh, Eli Steele, Amazon rejected it. We were canceled plain and simple, said Eli Steele. Uh, on the their website, whatkilledmichaelbrown.com, the Steeles offer other options for people looking to watch their documentary, but it's sadly telling about elite political conformity that an intelligent film that gives voice to a variety of people, almost all black, who would otherwise not be heard, is somehow deemed unfit for play company. As Eli Steele puts it, when Amazon rejected us, they also silenced those voices, and that is the great sin of a company that professes to be diverse and inclusive. Uh, you know, the, the, this is getting a bit tiresome, I, I have to say, and I, this is a difficult issue for free marketeers because on the one hand, it's private company and there should be no 
uh, censoring. Well, there, yeah, should be no state compulsion with right. respect to what you must publish or post. But on the other hand, um, you and you have this uh, with respect to uh, people's uh, Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts and the content regulators by the truth squads of these various uh, big tech platforms. I feel uh, like we live in a communist country sometimes. Well, I mean, the New York <laughs> I mean, Times, honestly. the New York Times has a big spread. The problem with free speech. It's not so much even where we're at now, because what uh, Amazon has done now is raise the profile on what killed Michael Brown. And hopefully more people will go to the website and, and stream it. And maybe another distributor will come forward and pick it up for wider distribution. I hope so, because, I mean, Shelby Steele is one of the great intellects on American culture of the last 50 years. This is insanity. It's like what Dr. J. Bhattacharya said um, on the show yesterday, which is uh, censorship is anti-science. So Google censoring the Great Barrington Declaration uh, and all of these renowned scientists like Dr. J. Bhattacharya from Stanford and Martin Kaldor from Harvard and Sunetra Gupta from Oxford, it's insanity. It's anti-intellectual, it's anti-science, it's anti-truth. It, but it, but even where we are now is not as concerning as where we're going. Where we're going if these same individuals have complete control of the apparatus of the state. That's the issue. Oh, and by the way, in contrast, mm -hmm. right here in Chicago, the ABC affiliate, ABC7 Chicago. What about them? On their Facebook page, this did not get slowed in terms of spread posted a memorial picture, uh, a headshot with candles around the image of George Floyd. Today, yesterday, would have been George Floyd's 47th birthday. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that George Floyd is dead, just as I'm sorry that anybody dies at the hands of police or in any other way. But, but, but excuse me, we have had 625 people murdered in Chicago this year. Uh, how many kids under the age of 18 caught in the crossfire? Under are the you, age of six. Are you going to do, absolutely. Are you going to do uh, their, what would have been their birthday memorials? Are you going to do a, what would have been David Dorn's 79th birthday on November 26th? I, either I'm, I am sick or there is something very sick about people like at ABC Chicago, who think that is in any way appropriate. One of us has a sickness. I don't know who it is, but we better figure it out. To help us figure out who's sick, we're pleased to be joined by Roger Kimball. <laughs> Dr. Kimball, page <laughs> Editor of The New Criterion. Also, he's got a new book out, Who Rules? Sovereignty, Nationalism, and the Fate of Freedom in the 21st Century. Roger, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, what about, uh, I mean, you, you're a, a noted intellectual. What about uh, uh, the, the steel film being uh, shut down by well, Amazon and, and what this says about where we're at? Yeah. Well, it's, it's appalling, of course. Um, I haven't seen it, um, but I, a friend of mine has seen it, says it's terrific. But you were exactly right. It, anything that contravenes the dominant narrative the politically correct, virtue signaling, woke narrative is subject to review and cancellation today. <clears throat> and it's an Orwellian situation. Uh, you know, at the, at the end of, of 1984, uh, when, when Orwell's talking about newspeak, mm -hmm. says, you know, the, the, uh, the, the entire uh, deposit of the past, all the literature, all the history will be subject to uh, scrutiny and rewriting to bring it into conformity with what the party demands. Uh, ultimately, Orwell says, uh, there will be no document that has not been rewritten, no statue that, that will remain standing unless it passes muster. And, you know, it, it sounds like a uh, dystopian fantasy. But when you look at what uh, is happening on our uh, uh, college campuses today, uh, where virtue signaling social justice warriors enforce a, a regime of strict conformity, they talk about diversity, 
but what they're really about is strict intellectual and moral conformity about any contentious issue. When you look at what these gigantic um, media companies are, are, are doing, like uh, Amazon, and of course, it's not just Amazon, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's Google. The, these companies present themselves as neutral, um, almost like utilities, that they're just there. Um, the, the telephone company provides you with telephone service. The electric company provides you with electricity. And Google and Facebook and Twitter and Amazon um, want to be uh, given similar exemptions from government control. Now, I'm not, I'm not a big one for government control of uh, almost anything, but uh, I, I, uh, I do think that these companies um, uh, pose a, a very deep problem to the free circulation of ideas because they are not neutral. Um, they are not neutral providers of the service. They have an ideological agenda. It would be as if the, the electricity company were to deny you electricity because you voted the wrong way or because you made a movie that um, uh, presented a different point of view about the death of Michael Brown. Uh, everyone knows, everyone who's actually looked into the case knows that Michael Brown was not the gentle giant. He didn't say, don't shoot with his hands up. That is a lie. He, he, he um, uh, went for the, for the policeman's gun. There was a, a tussle in the, in the policeman's car, uh, and, and he, was, he was shot um, uh, assaulting a police officer. That is, that's just the truth. We, we know that. Uh, and, you know, as far as George Floyd goes, I mean, um, we'll, we'll have to wait for a court to know for sure. We, but we do know some things. We know that he had a twice lethal dose of fentanyl in the system when he died. So uh, while he died um, in police custody, it's not at all clear that he died as the result of uh, police action, uh, notwithstanding uh, that uh, video showing the police officer um, restraining him. Uh, if there's other um, video footage that presents a different picture, and we'll ha just have to wait and see. And it's um, uh, anyone who talks about the murder of George, George Floyd at this point, I think, is um, speaking out of turn because we don't know that he was murdered. Well, we well, well, died. well. Actually, in point of fact, uh, St. Louis prosecutors declined to prosecute. So uh, that that should tell you a lot. And those are not uh, conservative Republicans down there in the St. Louis prosecutor's office. Indeed. Indeed. There's there's another film out there, Riding the Dragon. Uh, I watched it. I'm sure you did, yes. do, Peter Schweitzer. Yes. Uh, that's bringing yes. to the forefront here about Joe Biden saying years ago, or not even that, months ago, that I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. Yes. Well, um, I believe that he lied. That is the, uh, the, the, the brief, unvarnished truth about what Joe Biden said. He lied. Uh, it's you know, Peter Schweitzer. Uh, showed in detail the extensive um, corruption of the Biden family in China and Ukraine and elsewhere. And the idea that somehow he, he didn't know about it is preposterous, as uh, this uh, recent revelation from the New York Post yesterday uh, shows. And of course, there again, I mean, you, I think you mentioned that in your opening remarks, um, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you know, were desperately trying to bury that news under under uh, a cloak of silence, but um, I'm happy to say that that um, the news seems to be out today. We have furious uh, denunciations from the from Camp Biden that oh no, this was he the meeting never took place, but we know that it did, and uh, the public knows that it did. And I hope that they will take that into consideration do you, when do you, November 3rd rolls around. Do you think conservatives spend too much time exposing the hypocrisy of the left, the uh, people who don't uh, preach what they practice? Uh, it, it seems to me that, um, as others have argued, that hypocrisy to the left is a sort of a status symbol. Of course the rules are different for me because I'm me. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is, this, mm -hmm. is the, this is the Nancy Pelosi, we feed them sort of uh, way of thinking. Yeah. And so yeah. so instead of spending the time that we spend to reasonably go through what they said versus what they do and how different rules apply to different people and so forth, is it just that to, to, should we just be doing uh, to some extent what they try to do to conservatives? You just put a label on people and you just pound and pound and pound that label. And uh, the difference 
between us and them would be that our label, cultural Marxist, for example, identitarian, would be uh, w would be reflective of who they actually are versus them projecting onto us who they actually are. I mean, should is our messaging uh, as not as effective as it could be in the context of political campaigns? Well, I'm sort of a Johnny Mercer um, person when it comes to this kind of thing. I think that one should endeavor to accentuate the positive. Um, that said, you know, I, I, I mean, I think that the, the president, in my view, should should uh, tout um, his achievements and should talk about what he's going to do uh, as, as far as possible. But that said, um, it's quite clear that that the the left in this country uh, and it's it's moving further and further left. I mean, you have a <laughs> confessed Stalinist running for mayor of Portland of Portland at the moment. Uh, that they are playing by the the uh, uh, playbook articulated by Saul Alinsky in his Rules for Radical, and you know they it's a take no prisoners. It's a um, uh, it, it's not even it doesn't even quite rise to the level of hypocrisy because it's so cynical. Um, but you're quite right. They regard the rules as something. Uh, for the little people, not they don't follow the rules, um, and their justification is because they believe that they embody virtue. They think that their um, that their position is the only true virtuous position, and anyone who disagrees with him with, with them is evil. You see this in the uh, democratic questioning of of um, Judge Barrett over the last few days. This uh, uh, the, the 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 dripping contempt with which they treat this distinguished jurist is really quite appalling. But why do they do that? Well, it's because they think that um, uh, anyone who disagrees with them about, for example, Obamacare or um, uh, abortion or whatever the issue is, that 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 person doesn't just have a different point of view; they're evil. And what do we do with people who are evil? We stop them. We treat it like um, uh, a heresy. It has to be silenced. And that is, um, that's really what they're about. And it's, it, it's, there are two elements to it, I think. One is this conviction of virtue I speak of, and the other is, is less, less edifying. It is uh, the, 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 the thirst, the greed for power. And you put those two things together, uh, moralism, with, it, with this unbridled thirst for power, and it's a prescription for very bad things indeed. He is Roger Kimball, editor of The New Criterion. His new book, Who Rules? Sovereignty, Nationalism, and the Fate of Freedom in the 21st Century, that's released on Election Day. Uh, Pre-order mm -hmm. it now, as long as Amazon will let you pre-order it. Uh, Roger <laughs> Kimball, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. After 25 years of building websites for all kinds of companies and many